What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery, welcome to my channel. What I do here is I break down the occult sciences to a very practical level so that you can use them and apply them in your own life, okay, so that you get real results with it. Now, just to give you some clarity on who I am, my name is Jeremiah Schwartz and I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in Kabbalah and I am studied when it comes to tarot and when it comes to astrology and planetary energies and things of that nature. This is just to give you a little bit of clarity on who I am and who you're getting this information from, just so you know that this isn't just someone sitting here that's reading a bunch of books and regurgitating knowledge that hasn't actually been practiced. This is all stuff that I've practiced. This is all stuff that I've experienced in my day-to-day -day life, and I am someone who gets real results with um, the uh, occult development that I've obtained, okay? So what we're going to be talking about in today's video is definitely something that I think is going to offer people value um, in regards to getting in the field, getting, you know, getting their hands wet um, in the field of the occult in general um, because I'm noticing that there is a lot of people that are performing invocations. There's a lot of people that are starting to want to work with spirits and there are going to be some people that jump right in. You know, they have that spirit where they're like, fuck it, I want to learn, I'm going to jump right in. Um, and then there's some people that are like, I'm not sure if I want to jump right in yet, I still need to contemplate some things, I still need to meditate on this, um, I want to gain more knowledge before I just go ahead and jump in. And um, it's not that one of those is good and one's bad, it's, you know, you, you got to listen to your intuition and trust your spirit. But I do want to give some clarity on this subject that I think will offer value to both groups of these people. So the subject that I'm specifically going to be covering is what exactly is possession and how does it affect you? <clears throat> what are some of the um, things that will happen to you when you get possessed? What are some of the potential downfalls um, that can uh, stem from possession? And what are some of the things that you can gain from um, possession and how do you not get possessed and how do you end up getting possessed? I'm going to be covering these things, okay, because this is really important and um, there is an underlying reality um, to possession when it comes to the world we live in, okay, like on your day-to-day -day life, whether you're involved with the occult or not, possession is something that is very prominent and something that is around you daily, okay? So, if you want to know a little bit more about the subject, stay tuned for this video. Okay, so let's jump right in. So here's the deal. This is where I'm going to start. So this is the deal. Possession is way more common than you might think. Now, everyone on some level is being possessed, okay? Now, the thing that matters is what are you being possessed by, okay? So what exactly is possession? Possession is inhabiting something, okay? So obviously, if you're aware, if you're watching my channel, you're probably well aware that we are spiritual beings, meaning we are not just one-dimensional beings. We literally exist on different dimensions. That's why we have a conscious mind, we have a subconscious mind, and then we have an unconscious mind. Three different aspects of the mind that literally connect to different dimensions. You can think of as different actual planes that literally connect into the multiverse. Okay? So with that being said, we are these energetic beings when you get to the root of it. So these physical bodies are being inhabited by other dimensional energies. So the reality is, is yes, we are all possessed. But what are you possessed by? Okay, I'm gonna start with the things that are good to be possessed by, okay? And it's two, two main things, okay? These are the best things that you wanna be possessed by. First and foremost, the first thing you want to be possessed by is your own spirit, okay? Yourself, okay? Your own spirit, which is directly connected to your own intuition, 
your own inner knowing, that inner guidance that you have, that inner compass that leads you where you need to go. Um, trusting your gut is what it sometimes is called. This is what your spirit is. You can think of your spirit. See, a lot of people don't know what it's like to have a real connection with your spirit. See, when you're someone like myself, who's a high level occultist, you literally can see, I can see my spirit. I've created my spirit. I've developed and empowered my own personal spirit. I call it the daemon, which represents to me day moon. It is a balanced spiritual being that is literally me and I am it. Um, and it is just an aspect of my own other dimensional being. That is who I am. And once again, I've developed it. I, I wasn't. I did, I would, it wasn't born with this very powerful um, spirit that was always in control and knew what was what was exactly going on. I when I started, you know, here on Earth when I was born, I went through the process of indoctrination just like every other human being goes through. You know, I have had points in my life where I was completely separated from my spirit. There was points in my life where I was shelled. My my energetic field was shelled. I didn't know what was going on. I was depressed, highly depressed, didn't know how to get out of it, was addicted to drugs, um, and I've hit many rock bottoms in my life, okay? I've been through that, and I know I'm well aware there's other people that have been through that. Many of you have been through that. So developing your daemon, developing your own spirit is a process, and there is a science to that process, and this all comes into the context of the Kabbalistic initiation um, that is proper in regards to traveling through universe B, through the cliff off, through the tunnels of Set, and continuing onwards, um, which is what I've mentioned in other videos before, and I will be covering step-by-step -step structures on how to do this on my Patreon in the very near future, Okay, which is going to be literally foundational. This is not only foundational, revolutionary in regards to the occult field. Okay, revolutionary. What I mean by that is that if you apply what I'm about to start teaching in the near future, you are going to gain power that some of the most elite people have had access to, and I'm going to teach you how to have that same power, which is has not really been done before. I mean, there's a few people that have done it, but it's not that public, and I'm going to make it more public, but it's going to be on my Patreon, so you have to pay to gain access to that. But yeah, long story, that, so let's put that to the side for now. Um, so you want to be possessed by your own spirit. Now I created a little bit of a context of what your own spirit is. And then the second thing that you want to be possessed by is source. Okay. What is source? Source is an energetic current that you can think of that goes beyond all of the dimensions that we can think. It is beyond the multiverse. It is a source of energy that interconnects and strings together all of the multiverses under an evolutionary order. Okay, so when you hear people talk about cosmic law, that is source. Source creates cosmic law, okay? Source is evolution. So if you have a link with source, or if you have a connection to source, if you're being possessed by source, that energetic current, that's going to be very valuable because you're always going to be moving in the direction of evolution, and evolution is always what is in your best interest at all times, no matter what. It will always lead you into the position for your best interest, naturally. So these two things are important to be possessed by. Now, let's speak about the reality of what's going on in the world around us. The reality is that there are many parasitic energies that are inhabiting the mass collective consciousness based off of inner elites, based off of energies that are inhabiting them, that are um, using their influence to spread these parasitic energies on the mass collective. Um, so once again, the reality is, is that most people have these parasitic energies that are inhabiting them. And I've, I spoke about this recently um, in a the chakra video that I have on my channel, that's one of my more recent videos, where there is a parasitic larvae type of spirit that literally will inhabit the top of your head and suck out all of your sexual energy. And once it does that, then it fully inhabits your awareness. So it literally becomes you and it thinks for you. And it causes your mind to be in a constant race 
because it's thinking for you and it's causing you to be distracted and use up all your life force so it can take it. Um, go ahead and watch my seven chakra video that's more recent on my channel to understand more about that. But okay, so take it back. So the reality is most people are possessed right now, even if you don't think you are, even if you're not aware of it, you're most likely possessed by some sort of chaotic larvae-ish type of entity. Now, the only way you can get immune to these types of parasites and these types of energies that want to feed off of your sexual energy and your life force is once again by developing yourself to become a powerful spiritual being, to literally develop yourself to become an apex predator. Um, and once again, this happens through proper initiation in regards to traveling through the different hell realms of the cliff off the proper way, and the tunnels of set, which give you immunity to these parasites. But once again, it's not an easy process to go through. And uh, it's, it is, it is once again, like I want to make, make this clear. It's not easy to go through. It's tough. I mean, obviously if you're developing your, your, being to be immune to these parasitic energies, you can only imagine that it would take a, a level of intense self-development to get to that place of power. And it's true, it does, but that is the way to do it. And in the long scheme of things, it is totally worth it to go through that transformation, to go through that experience of initiatory self-development so that you are no longer affected by these parasitic energies that are literally inhabiting and possessing most people around you. And they're infectious too. So that means that let's say you do meditation and the parasite gets upset because the parasites hate when you are in a silent state of mind. So they get upset and they try to, they try to get you to think on certain things. They try to get you to check your phone. They want you to like move. They want you to get out of your meditation or your state of silence, what I like to call the death posture. So if you can stay in a state of meditation for long enough, they will leave you because they, they hate that. They hate that. The reason why they hate it is because you're pulling, when you're in a state of silence and you're in a state of meditation, you're pulling in source and these parasitic energies hate source. All they want is chaos and they feed off of chaos. That's all they are. They're these chaotic energies that feed off more chaos. And when they can't get the chaos, they literally need to, to leave and find chaos because now source is coming through, evolution is coming through. But the second you get out of your meditative state and you go back into your real world and you start interacting with people again, their parasites latch back onto you because all the parasitic energies that exist on people's heads are self-similar because chaos, if you understand the science behind chaos, um, it's all self-similar. So it can literally reattach on you because it finds the right pathways through the multiverse, these parasitic energies that are other dimensional energies, they find the right pathways to relatch on your energy field and then appear back again. So once again, there is, there's, a, there's um, a way to permanently get rid of these things by permanently changing your energetic field. Okay, and once again, I've explained this many times in my videos. So if you study my channel, you'll understand what I'm saying. And you'll be able to put pieces together. Um, you know, I'd be here forever if I broke it down every video I made. Um, but yes, the proper w system of initiation can help rid you of these parasitic energies permanently by permanently changing your energy field into the vampiric energy body which creates a negative torsion field for your soul, which I've explained before, which constantly is sucking in chaos. So the parasites, they can't latch onto you. They get sucked into you and you source them. So all that sexual energy they took from other people, all the sex or all the life force they've taken from other people now gets channeled into you and programmed and developed into your energy field. And you just become more powerful and more powerful. And it's ongoing. There's, there's literally no limit to it. That's why... When you look into Hollywood, the vampire is immortal. It literally can live forever. And it's the same concept energetically because when you understand what I'm saying, where we live in a reality where there's parasitic energies running most people, um, when you feed off of those parasites by being a vampire, all the energy they're stealing is downloading into you, which literally makes you live longer, okay? And ever since I started doing this, I started to get into better shape. So I don't know if you can tell, but I have really big arms. 
in shape. I have an eight pack. I literally have an eight pack. My face is starting to look better. It's not perfect where I want it to be, but I'm literally getting younger ever since I started really embracing this, this vampiric path um, in its totality. So like, you know, it, there's a whole process to it. You know, as I went through my initiations, the initiations is what's tough. You know, that took me two years. Through that process, you lose everything. You literally lose everything. Um, but when you get out of it, you regain everything because in the process of it, while you were losing everything, you're like unmanifesting every aspect of yourself that was parasitic, which is like, a you could think of it like a major purging and a major re, um, like unloading of information that was attached to you. And then you rebuild once you finish the process and when you finish the the full initiations, the whole process, which took me two years, a little over two years, then all the stuff that you've created in your mind, in the astral and in the other dimensions that you visualize, whether that's just through lucid viewing, astral projection or ritual or whatever it may have been, starts to actually take a crystallized form once you fully finished your initiations and then you really become the real living human vampire. And that's where I'm at right now. And that's why everything's starting to work out. So if you had seen me seven months ago, I look different, way different. And I look way better now, only seven months ago, because all this stuff is crystallizing in, my, in the physical world for me now. I had recently fully finished my initiations. Um, somewhere around like seven, eight months ago is when I finished my full initiation. Um, and now things are starting to really manifest. Things are starting to appear. It's once again, it's all crystallizing again. And it, and it all makes sense if you understand Kabbalah and you understand initiation because the final pathway is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is the planet of concealment. It's the planet of discipline, order, and crystallization. And the archetypal pathway is ruled by the universe, which is also on the inversion, the matrix. So if you take the universe and you flip to the back of the universe for the tarot card, that would be the matrix, the universe B as aspect. So not only is it ruled by Saturn, and not only is that the last pathway that you have to go through to fully manifest everything that you've done and you've transformed within yourself, but now you are the architect of the new matrix that you are in control of in creating. So you are the architect. So if you think about the movie, The Matrix, you become the architect. If you go through the system of initiation, the proper way as a universe B vampire, and you travel through all the different tunnels of set and the cliffhothic spheres. That's where I'm at right now. <clears throat> so now that this is understood, that was important. Let's go into possession. So here's the reality. When you start working with spirits, okay, and I'm going to speak, this is once again coming from personal experience. When you start working with spirits, there are, I, I totally understand this, there are people that will go ahead and just jump right into invocations, okay, they don't, they don't know anything about really what they're doing. All they know that they're doing is that they're about to summon a spirit, they're going to at least try to summon a spirit. Um, and hopefully their intention is to gain power and hopefully their intention is to gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That is what I hopefully would hope that you have in your intention or your mind when you're going to do an invocation of a spirit, especially a demonic spirit. Um, so the reality is, if that is your intention, a lot of the times, once again, if you don't know what you're doing and you're new, you will get possessed by that spirit. Now, here's the reality, okay? I am someone who totally has been possessed by spirits. I have been completely possessed by spirits. Um, I've had experiences in my life where I was doing, you know, I've been in ritual and I was doing certain types of invocations, saying certain types of um, chants, ends, things of that nature. And I've literally heard spirits speak through me and the, my entire voice changed. Like when I tell you, like something you would almost see in a Hollywood movie where when you're speaking, there's like a different voice that comes out of you. 
I've done that before. I've experienced that. I've experienced a spirit, literally, I've seen it come into my body on multiple occasions. I have literally seen a spirit, like a, a silhouette of a being, um, one, a light silhouette. This came from specifically Lucifer. And I remember the day, um, but I was doing some channeling of Lucifer, not channeling. I was doing some um, uh, workings with him. I was using his end and I was calling on him. I was intending to pull him into my energy field and it very profound came right into my body. Like I literally saw his figure just enter into me and I felt it. That was very profound. That is a form of possession, okay? Because now this his energy field, his archetypal energy field, which is a very powerful one, is now in me. So that means I'm now going to be perceiving from the energetic current of Lucifer. And I've had this happen with my own spirit when I was developing my daemon. Um, and when I was developing my, uh, my connection with my own spirit, I had this literally happen with my own spirit. Um, so it's happened to me on multiple occasions. I've been possessed by other types of spirits too. Like when I've done invocations for Belial, when I've done invocations from certain Ars Goetic demons, I've been possessed by these spirits. I have felt what it was like to be inhabited by their energetic archetypal energies where I wasn't necessarily thinking for myself a hundred percent, but I was also being influenced by that spirit. So I was me, I was still thinking as me, I was still intending my intentions, but there was an there was also another influence behind that that was coming from that spirit, okay? That's the best way I can explain what it's like to be possessed. Now, here's the reality. Is possession bad? It depends. The reality is, is that when you're newer to the occult and you're not somebody who's strong-minded, you're not someone who has a strong connection with source, you're not someone who understands that there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows and that you need to learn how to find balance in both of those, there are a lot of people who will go to do these invocations or rituals or whatever it is to work with external spirits, multi-dimensional beings, that are way, way, way more powerful than what they are in regards to their own spirit, spiritual connection and their own understanding of source. So that spirit oftentimes will influence them so much that they completely feel like they're not themselves and it scares a lot of people. Okay, I've been in that place before. I've, as I said, I've worked with very powerful spirits and I've invited them into my body before. I literally have just freely, not only one, multiple at, you know, multiple at the same time. So I know what it's like to have my energy field feel like it, it is being overridden by other energies. But I've always been someone that is patient. I've always been someone that is wise, understanding, and always wanting to gain more power. So I always, in those circumstances, recognize that I need to be the observer. And I'm always ready, willing, and able to sit down, take a breath, and just be alone, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I never was the person that freaked out to the point where I'm like, I'm done forever, I'm screwed forever, oh my God, I'm gonna go to hell, oh my God, what's going on right now, oh my God, like I'm, I, I must have messed up, I gotta find an exorcist. I've never been that person. I always would sit, I recognize I was the one that got myself into those situations, which means I am the one that was in power because if, if I did that, then there's always a reason why I'm doing it. This is how I view things because this is my connection with source. If I do something, whether it works out for me or doesn't work out for me, it always ends up working out for me because it either teaches me a lesson to maybe not do that again or not go down that road anymore, or it works out for me and I gain value and benefit from having done it. So no matter what I do, I always reframe it as I needed to do this and I'm glad that I did this and I learned something from this experience. 
So that's the same approach that I had with doing my spirit work when I first started and I didn't know about any of the symbolism. I didn't know about using talismans to protect myself. I didn't know about using power rings. I didn't know about using a wand. I didn't know anything other than the fact that I wanted to gain power and I know that these spirits have potential to teach me what they understand and, and I have the potential to take on their power and gain that spiritual uh Again, to gain that spirit's power within myself. That was the only thing I really knew. So it took me a long time to really develop a, a structured system for myself that now is, is very profound, very powerful, has a lot of scientific importance to it that gives you lots of protection, that makes sure that when you're calling on spirits, the entire process is geared around you sucking that spirit completely dry, and now that spirit has to serve you. Um making sure that you don't get possessed because the, the reality is, is you don't, you don't have to get possessed necessarily. You can just suck the spirit dry, take on its power and download it into yourself. Okay. That's the most effective way to approach it. Now I'm not saying that it's wrong to get possessed or that it's a bad thing. I mean, you can learn a lot from it. As I said, I'm at where I'm at right now. I'm at a very high level when it comes to using a call sciences. I've been possessed many times before. Okay. It's not ideal. And once again, to the person that is new and is not necessarily, you could say, as aware or as powerful as I was when I started, there's a lot of people that freak out and lose their mind and go insane and end up in mental hospitals and things of that nature from having gone through those experiences. But I'm also someone that has gone through those experiences and didn't end up in a mental hospital, didn't end up going down that road of freaking out in a downward spiral because of what I'm telling you. I've always had the intention that even if I made a mistake, it's really not a mistake. I learned from it and I, I will sit and I will deal with the consequences with patience and I'll embrace everything that comes with that. And this is a process of alchemy. So for the times when I was possessed by very powerful spirits, when I was a beginner, and the spirit's energy field was way stronger than mine and they inhabited my energy field, it would bring me many times to a place of I had to completely um, surrender in regards to I had to completely recognize that there's nothing I can do to override this energy that's now in me. I have to just let go and let this energy do what it's doing in me and observe the energy move through me. Just observe what it's doing within me. And obviously, the way I'm explaining this now, I'm making it sound like this is easy, and I'm making it sound like this is all you have to do, but the reality is, is when this happened to me, I would try to fight off the spirit in me, not necessarily intentionally, but that's what I was doing. So the spirit would be influencing me to do certain things, and I would be totally bought in with it, and I would be thinking it was me. So I would be like, the spirit was influencing me to be aggressive, let's say, and I would be extra aggressive because I thought it was me and I thought it was what I needed to do. And that was a part of the process. And I was willing to deal with those consequences. And guess what? There was consequences. I got into multiple altercations with people. I got, got into multiple arguments, multiple fights, yada, 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 yada. But at the end of the day, it led to me alchemizing that spirit that was inhabiting my energy field because I was patient with it and I didn't give up. I never surrendered. I never gave in to addiction. I never gave in to drugs and said, you know what, I quit. I never turned to Christianity again. I never turned to going to occult orders like Aleister Crowley's order, uh, the Golden Dawn, the OTO, the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, the Knights Templars. I never turned to any of these orders because I was like, oh, I, mu I made mistakes. Now I need to correct them and go to these orders and m do their rituals the proper way so that I make sure I'm doing it right. Because if I had done that, then I would have really screwed myself up because as you know, if you know my channel, you should know by now that those orders are using the inverted tree, which is really bad, really, really bad. Um, so I always trust in myself, always listen to my spirit. Yes, I've been possessed many times and I made it out. Okay, I made it through that. And now I'm at a point where I can call on a spirit and it can't possess me because my energy field is so powerful within my own daemon, my own divine intelligence, that I'm, I'm not naturally just sucking the spirit dry. 
So everything that that spirit has to offer, all the power, the skills, the attributes, naturally just gets sucked right into me. And now that spirit becomes an aspect of my own personal servitor. So that means it serves me and it does what I need it to do. So I can command it. And um, that's powerful. And that's where you can get to. But once again, in the beginning stages, it's common that a lot of people get into their occult practices without any knowledge whatsoever. Once again, without knowledge of protection, without knowledge of how to do it the most effective way to take on that spirit's power, without knowledge of anything. I mean, the directional system to, to, to stand in to get the most results, um, without knowledge of <laughs> anything really. And I was that person. Like I was literally that person. And there's a lot of people that start like that. Thankfully, we're moving into an age where there's people like myself that are going to start breaking down the science, which I have mentioned on this video uh, that I will be breaking down on my Patreon very soon here, which is going to be, that's all I got to say. Um, and there is some other people I know that are breaking this stuff down to a science, which is very powerful. And this is changing everything. This is changing everything with the occult field. So back to the beginner, the person who doesn't know what they're doing whatsoever and is doing invocations and channeling spirits and doesn't have a mentor like myself or doesn't have someone that can explain to them what's going on, um, a lot of the times that person will get possessed and they will start getting influenced by that spirit that they're working with, with those energies. And a lot of the times, the spirits that you work with, especially if it's the demonic, their nature is to feed off of you, okay? And that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a bad thing, okay? So, for example, the Ars Goetia, their nature is to feed off of your male principle. The male principle is what is the ability that every person has to manifest, okay? That's what their nature is. They feed off the male principle. If you know the Ars Goetia, they're all males, Every one of the Ars Goetia, if you really know the Ars Goetia, they're all male spirits. Yes, they can appear in you know female form as well, but they are naturally male spirits. And the reason is, is because they take the male principle away from the human race and they feed it back to the female spirits that rule the Cliffoth and rule the Tunnels of Set. So if you know about all the different names of the Tunnels of Set, every one of those tunnels of set is a female spirit, a female demonic spirit that the Ars Goetia serve. And you have 32 Ars Goetia in the tunnels of set, then you have 32 Ars Goetia in the Cliffoth, the universe B Cliffoth, and then you have eight more Ars Goetia that are in between, in between the, um, the tunnels of set in the Cliffoth, like right in the middle place, which equals 72. So the nature, once again, of these demonic spirits is to take away your male principle. Now that's not all bad because the starting point of developing yourself in the occult field is to become more feminine. And I don't mean being a feminist. <laughs> this is like, this is all like uh, mainstream indoctrination to make people have a weird idea of what being feminine really is. I'm not talking about being a feminist, feminine, meaning more receptive. So when the male principle is taken away from you, that naturally forces you to be more receptive. And the more receptive you are, the more that this now this dark feminine energy can influence you, the easier it's going to be for you to transition from universe A into universe B. And universe B is the starting point for developing yourself to be a vampire to suck in energies to take on their powers. So there's very there's a lot of benefits that you can gain from working with the Ars Goetia. And the same thing happens with um, you know, if you're working with other spirits. Like if, if you're going straight to the to the arc demons of the Cliffoth, for example, like Belial, um, Belzebub, Lucifuge, Satan, Moloch, um, Lilith, Baal, Belphegor, um, Adramlech, if you're going straight to them, then you're working with spirits that are, that are, you know, they're, they're more powerful than the Ars Goetia. They have rulership over a lot of the Ars Goetia. So they will cause even more transformation in your life. They will do things more profoundly. 
They will send, they have, these are spirits that have rulership over Ars Goetia. So they will send multiple Ars Goetia to do multiple things that will cause you to transform in the way that you're trying to transform if you're approaching them from an evolutionary perspective in regards to initiation and trying to grow and trying to become a universe B vampire. But once again, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the right starting conditions, the right intent, then this can scare off a lot of people and not only scare off a lot of people, but fuck a lot of people over. Because once again, let's say for example, you're working with Ars Goetia, they take away your, your male principle. Now you're like, How, I can't manifest the things I, I was able to manifest. Now you're freaking out because you're like, the spirit's like attacking me. It's not letting me, like, it, I, like I thought I was going to be able to work with the spirit and now it's going to do stuff for me and, and now I can't even do anything. I can't even manifest things. I have to just sit with myself and embrace my, 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 you know, embrace my own darkness. I embrace my own subconscious, unconscious, collective, all this stuff. Well, guess what? You didn't understand that that's, a, that's what you have to go through. That's, that's the process of development. You don't just, you don't just get a genie in a bottle and then it's there for you. You got to go through the process. So this scares a lot of people and if you're going to be approaching, for example, the Ars Goetia and they take that away from you and then you run away and you say, that was evil, I'm never going back to that, now you're really screwed because now you just put yourself in the system, the, the spirits were helping you transform, you didn't understand that they were helping you transform because all you cared about was yourself and all you cared about was gaining money, fame, sex, whatever it may have been. And now you're left with nothing because you ran the other direction. You ended up becoming a Christian. Now you're talking shit about the Ars Goetia. Now the Ars Goetia just want to feed off you more. So now they, they're fucking with you. This is what happens to a lot of people. And that can cause the person to go insane and end up in a mental hospital, end up being homeless, end up whatever, like bad scenarios. This is common. Now... If you were to do that with one of the arc demons of the Cliffoth, you can only imagine how much more intense that would be. It would be worse than just approaching one Ars Goetia. So there's levels to it. There's hierarchies. But if you're approaching it with the perspective of evolution and you're working with an Ars Goetia and it starts possessing you and it starts giving you its abilities and it starts shifting you into universe B, Although it's going to be uncomfortable because it, you're now taking on the energy of the spirit and it's doing things that are forcing you to change. It's doing things that are forcing you to change your perspective, change your mindset and things of that nature. That's uncomfortable. It's taking away your male principle. You're now not able to really manifest the same things that you once were. And the reality is, is that the things that you were manifesting that you're probably no longer able to manifest weren't even in your best interest. You were wasting time and you were wasting energy spending your focus on those things that you were manifesting or those things that you thought were so important, but really they weren't even that important. And if they were important, then they would stay in your life. Whatever gets taken out of your life, when you start developing yourself in the occult, you know, using the demonic, using the cliff off, using the tunnels of set, universe B, whatever gets removed from your life was an illusion. Okay, it was an illusion. It was never there for your best interest. It was never meant to be there. If it gets removed and it stays removed, whatever is meant to be there, whatever is in alignment with your highest potential will stay. It may go for a little bit and come back or it will stay the whole time. Okay, it's the whole system is geared towards removing illusions. And if you're aware by now, we live in a world where there are a lot of illusions. And my name is Jeremiah. The second half of my name is Maya which literally stands for illusion. So I know a lot about illusions. I didn't come into this world randomly with this name, okay? I, my name is very symbolic, Jeremiah. And my last name means black. So I, was, I literally came to earth to be a black magician. I literally came to earth to be a ruler and help shift this new stage of evolution that we're moving into. And I'm not a light worker, I'm not a tree hugger. I'm not here to hold your hand and bring you across. I'm only here to help people that are serious about it, that really want to do that and make effort to try and be successful with it. Those are the people that I, that I'll, that I work with. And for everyone that wants me to prove to them that I'm right, for everyone that wants me to prove to them that what I'm saying is true, you can fuck off. You can burn in hell. I don't give a fuck. I, I could care less. You know, I'm, I'm on the team of powerful beings, powerful people, becoming the most powerful person that you can possibly be. And if you don't want to join that, by all means, stay stay in your lane. Stay in your, your own personal realm, which I know is not fun and I know has no power whatsoever, so I don't even want you around me. 
Okay, but if you're looking to make progress, and you're looking to do it the proper way, then you'll hear the wisdom, you'll hear the understanding, you'll hear the, hear the knowledge that's coming through my intent that I'm communicating through this camera. And there's a lot of people that do. You know, there's a lot of people that feel what I'm saying is resonating with them on a very deep level. And this is gonna be more and more prominent as time goes on. People are gonna start realizing that this darker side of Kabbalah, this darker side of evolution in general is the real way to make real progress here on earth because this dark system of Kabbalah has been what's been used against the mass collective for years. And now that people are taking the system over, we're gaining all the powers of the spirits within that system and are now becoming the new architects, creating a whole new way to use the system. We're using all the powers we're gaining to destroy the people that are making this world parasitic. Okay? Using chaos against chaos. Sourcing it. So yeah, so this is this is the concept of um, possession. Okay? It happens. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to happen. You don't want to freak out. Okay, but the reality is, is there's going to be people that freak out. Okay, there's going to be people it's, and there's times where it's really tough and you got to just sit, you got to breathe, you got to feel it out. But I want you to understand that there is a science to evolving within the occult and there is a way to have huge amounts of protection before going into it so that you don't have to really worry about any of this possession bullshit that I'm talking about. Okay, there's something that's called the circle of the magician. There's something that's called the triangle of art. There are certain symbols that you can have around you that make it, that make you more less prone to getting possessed and more prone to sucking the, the power out of the spirit. There is a science to all of this. It's not just esoteric. It's not just made up. I didn't just say, hey, put this circle on the ground and do this and sign this and remember all these words and, you know, worship this and worship that. No, there is a real science to the interdimensional planes. And when you learn how to tap into that and harness these archetypal energies as well as earth energies, you literally can bypass a lot of the hardship that most people have to go through in regards to developing your occult power. And once again, I started at that point. Like I had to go through the hard, the hard shit. Um, I had to go through the tough stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I'm at where I'm at though. You know, the reason why I'm able to teach this to such a scientific level is because I went through the ringer. I went through all the mistakes. I did everything wrong. So maybe that's you too. Maybe you need to go through that and you're going to be an initiator for other people. But there's not many of us, you know. But, um, you know, there's people that aren't going to do it the way I did it. You know, they're not going to go through, the, they're going to learn the smart way. They're going to go through the, the science of it and they're going to make, they're going to develop a lot of power. But the truth is, is that if you do do it, um, your own way, meaning you go through all the ups and all the downs, you make the mistakes and you go through the trenches with it and you learn and you course correct and you find balance in those areas and that chaos, you do, um, develop more power. And the reason why is because you become a literal initiator. You become someone who understands the whole process from having gone down the roads that most people haven't gone down because you were a risk, uh, a risk taker from the beginning. Um, so I'm an initiator and for everyone that I initiate and gain and give power, um, or you could say for everyone that learns from me and starts gaining occult power, especially when I start teaching this stuff in its step-by-step -step structure, for everyone that does it and gains power, they're, they're gaining self-similarity power from me because my daemon, my own power, my energy field is huge. It's, it's like, it's connected with the earth's energy field. It's, it's just huge. Cause I've, I've done so much and I'm continuing to do more and I'm connected to source. I'm linked with source. So I am literally an aspect of source. I'm a walking source. I'm a walking ritual. So anyone that learns from me and then develops their source from my guidance, technically I'm their upline. And what they do successfully, one, they're getting benefited for it, but I'm getting benefited for it as well. And simultaneously, I'm helping them reach source. So whatever I'm doing that's beneficial is benefiting them as well. 
So it's a win-win scenario, and this is the only thing that can happen between universe B vampires and someone like myself who is an initiator. So essentially, I'm creating an empire right now, and that's just that's just what it is. Okay, um, but yeah, this is the concept of possession, as I mentioned, um, and. One last thing I do want to mention is that there are there is certain spirits that you do want to start working with in the beginning um, because they have a lot of rulership over other spirits. Um, there's a specific three spirits that come to my mind. I'll even go as far as saying four. There's a specific four spirits that are in my mind that I think are essential for really making deep levels of progress in regards to your occult initiations or your occult self-development. Um, and once again, the reason for that is because these four specific spirits are very powerful, very strong interdimensional beings that rule over most of the entire system itself. The Ars Goetia, the angels, uh, the Enochian angels, all of the, these beings. So when you develop a energetic connection with these spirits, then you develop their power or their guidance in the beginning of your, your journey, in the beginning of your practices, which can give you a lot of extra psychic power, a lot of extra psychic protection um, and guidance, straight up and guidance. And those four spirits are, uh, Lucifer is definitely one. Lucifer is absolutely one. Um, then you have Hecate. She is absolutely one. Um, then you have Belial. He's one. He's a ruler of the Ars Goetia, who's right under Lucifer. Hecate is right above Lucifer. So you could think of Hecate as the dark feminine mother of Lucifer. Um, then once again, you have Belial, who can give you astral protection when it comes to the abyss, um, when it comes to abyssal energies and when it comes to whatever comes out of the abyss to try and attack you or stop you or harm you, whatever it is. Um, scorpion armor is what it's called. Then you have uh, Lilith who can attune you to the feminine, the dark feminine, which can put you into universe B and teach you secrets of vampirism of how to transform into a vampire. Um, so yeah, so these are four very powerful spirits, but once again, like you, you got to understand when you start working with them, you're, you're tapping into something that's, that can easily pull you into deep levels of initiation. So that's why you kind of want to weigh, weigh it out for yourself. Like if you go straight to an Ars Goetia, you can learn from the Ars Goetia. You can develop, develop that Ars Goetia's power in, in certain abilities because it's going to, you know, it's, you're going to start downloading its energy into you and you're going to start developing its attributes within time as you're integrating and alchemizing them. But that's only one Ars Goetia, right? And you can do that for all the Ars Goetia and that would take some time and whatever. But when you go to these, one of these four spirits that I'm mentioning, they can pull you into initiation because when you work with these spirits, their, their primary goal is to gain power. And they gain power by you gaining power. Um, you could think of the, the highest uplines of those four spirits that I just mentioned as Lucifer and Hecate. Lucifer is a, a chaotic being in his totality that is also an aspect of source and has a hidden aspect of himself that wants to source chaos, that literally wants to destroy chaos. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. Um, okay, so... Once again, with that being said, that's a spirit that will pull you into deep levels of transformation because once again, Lucifer being a spirit that wants to source things, being an aspect of source, Lucifer is a vampire. He's a source vampire, which is why he's a very powerful spirit, but he's also a chaotic entity too. And he will accept your soul if you sell it to him. And he will trick chaotic entities to sell their soul away so that he can harness it to source more energies. So Lucifer is a very powerful spirit. He's a spirit that, that really does look out for evolution um, in a very ruthless way. Once again, if, if you are going down the path of chaos and you're going down the path of 
being inhabited by parasitic entities and you know making choices that are out of alignment with your true self lucifer will fuck you up he will destroy you he will have you come across certain people that will lead you to eventually giving up your soul he will take your soul harness that energy for himself and everyone who's self similar to lucifer so um just to source it because lucifer once again his totality of his being wants to bring evolution and source he is the light bearer so to develop a connection with lucifer you develop those attributions yourself i'm seeing lucifer appear right now um you develop those attributions yourself so i have that same character to me and that same energetic current that's why all the time i mention i'm not here to convince anything i'm not here to hold your hand and lead you in the right direction i'm here to provide opportunity for you to move forward if you take the opportunity and run with it but i'm not here to convince you because if you go down that path if you go down the path of chaos and self-destruction i get i get energy from that because i source your suffering i source your pain i source your mistakes um, so it's the same concept once again. Um, so that's why it would be very powerful to develop a connection with Lucifer from the beginning because he will guide you through chaos and have you become a master vampire like himself. And then you move past Lucifer. Then you move on to Hecate. This is, see, this is all part of a big process, okay? I'm just giving you an idea. Um, then you have Hecate, who's the mother, the dark mother. You could think of having deep connections to the black dragon, which is the overarching um, spiritual force of earth energies and has the potential to completely destroy the world as you know it now, being corrupt and being parasitic and being chaotic and restructure it as the one who rides the black dragon, the one who controls earth energies, which is the new Enochian master magician because that's what a nokian magic is is controlling earth energies um to restructure the entire matrix as the architect building it into a form that is much more in alignment with source so this is what hecate is like and she's very powerful and trust me when you see a spirit like lucifer look at hecate and tell you and 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 you can see like if you're a psychic like myself you can you can pull up Hecate and Lucifer, and you see how Lucifer interacts with Hecate, and he has respect for Hecate in a way that's that it's almost like she created him, like like he's the son and she's the mother, and you see it like you can if you're a psychic you can summon them and you will see how they interact with each other. So this I used to not know that I spent a lot of my initiation uh, for the first year and a half not knowing that there was even this real deep connection between lucifer and hecate i i got close to hecate on a very deep level towards the end of my initiations because it was time um but during that whole process of my you know most of my cliffothic initiations i was developing my connection with lucifer and i fully had taken on his power and when i fully did that that's when hecate came to me and started looking at me like i was her son essentially on in in a spiritual way and then she told me to start doing invocations with her doing rituals with her and then i took on her power i ended up becoming hecate so now i'm i carry lucifer and hecate in my energy field and they're constantly interacting in my day-to-day -day life and i can i can manifest them whenever because because i carry their energies they can literally like they can manifest instantly and speak to me and if I need to ask questions or learn something or whatever it is I can pull them up and they're both right there like right now I can see it and uh, they're they're basically um, aspects of myself now because I've totally taken on their power because I am the master vampire now so in remember although I'm working with these spirits and they've become me and I can work with them instantaneously I am still my own personal spirit and I have a name for my own personal spirit. Um, I have a sigil for my own personal spirit. I envision my own personal spirit more than anything I work with now. And this is the, and this is part of the information that I've received from Hecate and Lucifer. And they both said, now that you've developed our power fully in you, 
your primary focus is to now only focus on you, your own personal daemon, day moon. And you can think of the day moon as Lucifer being the day and the moon being Hecate, the day mon, day moon. So I'm making all these connections here, which I think are so profound and I really think could be foundational in the occult field that other occultists haven't covered. But, you know, I'll, I'll be covering this later in the future and I definitely have a lot more knowledge to share on the whole subject and everything like that, but I really like where this is heading. So other than that, I think this is enough. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. Definitely hit the subscribe button because I love to see my subscribers go all the way through the roof, okay? Appreciate it. Now, if you want to gain access to exclusive content that is not on my YouTube channel, which I think will offer you a lot of value, then I would highly recommend checking out my Patreon, which you'll find in the description at the very first link at the top. It literally says my Patreon right next to it. So I have videos on there where I'm literally performing occult practices on camera, and then after I perform it, I teach you how to do it yourself. For example, how to do an invocation, okay, which is where you're calling an intelligence into your body, a spiritual intelligence into your own energy field, and then you are taking on that spirit's power, um, alchemizing it into yourself, just like what we were talking about in this video, um, which can increase your psychic uh abilities, it can increase your psychic power, um, and it can increase your psychic protection, which means you're more protected, things of that nature. When you take on the, the power of a spirit, especially if the spirit has to do with protection and being invisible to your enemies or destroying your enemies, you're taking on all that power. So these are the things it can do for you. Um, that's what an invocation is. That's the type of video, one of the types of videos that I have on there where I teach you how to do that. And specifically in that video, I teach you how to invocate Lucifer. Okay. Now, the other bit of the videos are going to be more scientifically geared in regards to Kabbalah. So I'm breaking down every sphere of the tree of life and death, and I break it down to a practical way so you can understand the symbolism, the attributions, the spirits that are associated with them, and my own personal experience having initiated through those spheres myself. And I don't know anybody else talking about that information. Extremely valuable, okay? All stuff you'll find on my Patreon. The only way to get access to these exclusive content, to this exclusive content, is to be a tier two member or up. In order to be a tier two, it literally only costs $9.95 a month. And if you were to do the math, that will come out to less than a dollar a day. So there is absolutely no reason why you should not be able to afford that, especially with the value that is on there. And this is a fact. This is a promise from me to you. Okay, and with the content that's going to be coming, as I keep mentioning in the near future to my Patreon, and I will make it clear when it's out, holy fucking shit, this is going to be revolutionary in the occult field. Okay, um, there's four tiers altogether. As you go up in tiers, the benefits increase. I'll let you check that out for yourself, but definitely make sure you check out the highest tier. The benefit is very important. Um, and with that being said, I would love to give a special shout out to the highest tier members of the Patreon. Their names are mentioned right below this Patreon link, first link in the description. Huge shout out to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I highly appreciate you. And then I'd like to give a special shout out to all of my Patreon members. I highly appreciate all of you as well. And I appreciate the fact that you're taking your knowledge and your practices and your studies to the next level. That means a lot. Um, and then a huge shout out to all my YouTube subscribers. Okay. Next thing I'd like to say is go to the second link below where it says square appointments in the description. And if you would like to book your own personal tarot reading with me, where I give you a personalized reading with three cards, present, near future, long-term future, and give you clarity on exactly where you're at in your own spiritual evolutionary journey and where you're headed, connecting all of the, the, the reading, the symbolism back to Kabbalah, literally pointing out where you're at in your journey, where you're headed, what to expect, what to potentially look out for, breaking the cards down in an extremely subjective way, not just the traditional, this is what the card means, uh, this is what you feel like right now. No, this is like giving you a way more in-depth reading than you probably than you have probably had before. Um, and I only need three cards to do it. Um, so the way I do my reading is I do it on my own time. So you book your appointment. I see the time that your reading's booked for. I make sure I send the videos by that time. 
I do the reading on my own time because I like to fully get in my own zone to do it. And then when I finish, I record my phone on me, take a personal video for you, breaking down the entire reading. That is uh, a minimum of 30 minutes long. Once it's finished, I send it over to you. And then the only thing that I request is your personal feedback, personal, honest feedback, um, because currently I'm building up my testimonials and the list is getting big and I will be uploading that to YouTube. I upload it to my Instagram occasionally. Um, so yeah, so that's that. So that's where you can book your uh, tarot reading with me, the second link below. Other than that, I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.